Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are talking about Apple Shortcuts. And if you're not familiar with Shortcuts, Shortcuts is an app that's built into every iPhone, iPad, and Mac that allows you to automate certain tasks or kind of put a set of actions together to make your life a little bit easier. So today, I'm going to show you the five shortcuts that I use every day that I think you are going to love. So let's get into it. All right, so I am on my iPhone home screen and I have a stack of widgets, just one swipe over to the left here. So you'll see all of these blue icons are the shortcuts that I use the most often. So let's get into each one of those. All right, so our first shortcut here is play current podcast. This does exactly what you think it does. It does one click and it opens and plays my most recent podcast. So you'll see if I click on it, It opens up my podcast and it keeps playing from where I was at. So if you were going to build this, it's really simple. I'm using the Pocket Cast app. So if I just go here and I search for Pocket Cast, you will see here all of the different options you have. I simply use Resume Current Podcast and you've built it and you are good to go. So that one is incredibly simple. The second one that links into that is sent HomePod. So here I have a HomePod in my house. And this is also exactly what it sounds like. With one click, I can send whatever I'm currently listening to, to my HomePod in the kitchen. So if we dive into what this one does, you'll see handoff playback from iPhone to living room. And then it sets the media volume at 55%. So if you were going to have to recreate this, you would simply go into the search you would type handoff, you could click that, you can choose the source as your iPhone or your iPad or your iPhone, and then you can choose the destination. So here I have the living room HomePod, or you might have another Bluetooth speaker that would work. Then lastly, I set the media volume. So that is as simple as clicking set media volume and adjusting the slider there. The cool thing about using those two shortcuts in tandem is that with just two clicks, I can start listening to my current podcast right at home. So obviously you are not at home here to hear what it sounds like, but if I swipe over here, click play current podcast, and then I click send to HomePod, it is now playing in the other room. Pretty cool, pretty simple. All right, let's continue on down the list of shortcuts. The third one here is a little bit more advanced and it is map to my next event. So what this shortcut is going to do is it's going to look at my calendar and pull all of the events that I have for the day with a location. And it allows me to quickly click on one of them and get directions to that place. So I'm gonna do it right now just so you can see. So if I click on it, I've got three items, top of the rock, lunch with friends and check in to my hotel. All I have to do is click on one of them and it will give me directions either in Apple Maps or Google Maps or whatever is your app of choice. So let's talk about how this one is built. So if we click here into the edit settings, it starts with find all calendar events where the following are true. This is a default one for the Apple calendar. So if you're using iCloud, Google Outlook and you have it synced into the Apple Calendar, you'll be good to go. So you have find all calendar events where all is true. I want the start date to be today because I want to look for events where I need to go to them today. And I want the location to have something in it. So that's why I have location is anything. You can see down below, you can add additional filters if you'd like, if you want to search for certain calendars or certain times of day or certain people, anything like that. You can make it more complicated, but I intentionally have it simple just to find what tasks are happening in this specific day. They're sorted by start date and it puts them in order and I have it limited to six events. I don't need to see a list of 20. I just wanted to see the six. So that's how Shortcuts is going to pull those calendar events. Then if the calendar event has any value, it's going to open those driving directions. So you'll see open driving directions from my current location to the calendar event using maps. Again, you can easily click on maps and change it to be Google Maps or any other app of your choosing. Otherwise, it sends an alert that says no events. Again, just to show you what that looks like, when I click map to next event, it just pulls the, I only have three events today, so it's pulling those three. 
and I can easily click on one of those to get directions there. And I use that every single day. I get in the car and I click map to next event and I know exactly where I'm going to go without having to dig through any other apps. Next, let's jump into my fourth shortcut, which is toggling Siri notifications. If you use AirPods or AirPod Maxes or any of the other Apple headphones, you often get notifications that sound like text message arrived from this number or new alert from Slack. And sometimes that can just be kind of annoying. And the way that you toggle that off in settings is it's pretty deep and buried and it can be kind of hard to find. This is literally one click, you click it, it looks like literally nothing has happened, but you have stopped all notifications from being sent to your AirPods. Again, if you want them back on, you simply click it. It's incredibly simple. Let's look at how you would build this one. It is literally toggle announce notifications. So if you are looking for that, you can just search announce, set announce notifications and change it to be toggle and you're good to go. All right, the fifth and final shortcut that we are going to talk about today is starting a focus timer. Some people call this a Pomodoro timer, which is basically the idea that you could set a 25 minute timer. You use that to be completely not distracted and you just get your work done. You don't look at your phone or do any other thing like that. So I've made a couple slight tweaks to this to make this shortcut work for me. So let me show you how it works. If I click start focus timer, it's gonna ask me how many minutes do I wanna do? In this case, I'll type 25 and I'll click done. If you notice up top, you'll actually see that the focus mode changed to do not disturb. And I've now got a timer there for 25 minutes. So that's all built into this shortcut. And when that 25 minute timer ends, do not disturb will turn off. All right, so here I am in shortcuts. I'm going to click edit here and you'll see that it starts by asking for a number and it states how many minutes. This is just asking how many minutes do you want your timer to be? It's going to round that number to the nearest ones place, and then it's gonna start a timer. So if you type 20, it'll start a 20 minute timer. If you type five, it'll start a five minute timer, and it then opens the clock up. Next, in a separate action, we're going to pull the current date and time. So let's say that it is 10 a.m. right now, and you've typed 10 minutes in that top question. What it's gonna do is basically say, when I turn on a new focus mode, I need to go from 10 a.m to 1010, that's how it knows when to start and when to stop. So it's gonna take that provided value of 10 minutes, add it to the date that it pulled just up above, and it turns on do not disturb until that adjusted time. Now there's a lot of ways you can customize this and tweak this. It doesn't have to be do not disturb. You can choose a different focus mode that you have on your phone. You can have it set the adjustment times and dates in a different way. But for me, this is what works best. I love that I can just grab my phone, grab a 25 minute timer and set my phone face down. And I know that it is not going to buzz or alert me of anything. And I can just use that time to just focus and not be distracted. So those are the five shortcuts that I am using every single day on my iPhone and on my iPad and on my Mac. If you're having trouble building them, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'd be happy to help you. So I hope you learned something in this video and see you in the next one.